We are back again with more absolutely unhinged Reddit stories. The gift that keeps on giving, Reddit. Uh, I wanna say I'm thankful for it, I don't know. Anyways, uh, today my guests are Tommy and Mac is back again. Hello. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Um, the theme for today, uh, I didn't create this theme, this was created by it was created for us. Producer, director, Keanu. It's our time to shine. It is. Uh, the theme is gay rights and gay wrongs. Solid. Let's just start going. Let's dive in, baby. Okay. Am I the asshole for complimenting my brother's boyfriend? Okay. <laughs> uh, do you think they're the asshole or not? Do you want to just go off the bat? No, basically. No, I, I mean, think you can compliment someone. For, for complimenting my brother's boyfriend? Yeah. What? Yeah, co <laughs> yeah. compliment anyone. Yeah. You're not an asshole. Okay, I'm so, excited to see how they are. So yeah. right yeah. now we we have all determined. I agree with you. Not the asshole. That seems like a fine thing to do. Shane, you're you're an ally. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What sure. your guy says is great. <laughs> My brother, who's 21, has a boyfriend who's 23, who is absolutely gorgeous. Just a straight up beautiful man. Okay. Not only that, he's funny, kind, sweet, has boyish humor, and is masculine. L like my brother and I clearly have the same taste in men. However, not only would I never date anyone my brother's in a relationship with, his boyfriend is gay, so literally zero chance anyway. That being said, I compliment him a lot and play, play flirt with him. Yesterday, I was just in a playful mood and really piled it on. I was giving him shoulder rubs, complimenting his facial hair. He's usually clean shaven. I tripped and grabbed his arm to catch myself and went, ooh, and squeezed his arm. <laughs> Uh, we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I brought him a soda and said, here you go, handsome. My brother was visibly pissed off, but since I'd done this sort of thing before, albeit not this much, and he'd never seen mad, so I thought it was something else. His boyfriend eventually left to pick up some food, and my brother let me have it. I kept explaining that it's just a joke, and he shouldn't be mad that someone else is complimenting his boyfriend. Am I the asshole? Uh, so obviously this is his, uh, his sister. Uh, saying this because uh, right. she goes, yeah, he wouldn't. Th his boyfriend wouldn't be into her. Mm -hmm. um, now, what do you guys think after after? No, I like me some compliments. So, go ham, honestly. If she's being an asshole to her brother, she's not being an asshole to this boyfriend. Yeah, the boyfriend hasn't said anything, and and the brother hasn't said that the boyfriend said anything. So he's not bothered. Um, right. I think it all sounds funny. Like, I don't know. I. If I don't, so I don't have any siblings, so I have no, I, okay, no totally. idea. I don't. I can I don't, tell. Yeah. <laughs> Is Mac the <laughs> asshole? For uh, so I don't like understand that that dynamic. However, if I had, you know, like let's say like my best friend on the planet that like lived with me or something, and I had a boyfriend over and she's like laying it on that ham, that heavy, I would be like, Do you want to f my boyfriend? <laughs> I'm like. It's, it's just, it's a little too, I think it, it feels like too many times, too far. It's just a lot. It's a lot. The, the trip and grabbed his arm to catch myself and going, ooh, and sque squeezing his arm. Uh, it also just kind of, mm. I don't know, it, I guess it reads to me kind of like an ant, like what an ant might playfully do to people. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it, it doesn't come across like actually trying to do anything. It comes mm. across to me as a joke. Obviously there's no goal. She admits like this guy is not gonna ever be into her. Mm -hmm. So it is all just for fun. Um, okay, let me put this out there. If a gay, okay, so let's let's swap all gender here. And so it's a straight couple. It's a, a girlfriend and her yeah. boyfriend. And I'm the gay brother and I'm play flirting with that boyfriend. We're getting into gross territory. We're getting into like, you, hey, you're not gonna f my boyfriend kind of thing. You know what I mean? But yeah. she seems more like she's like, oh dear, oh. Yeah, you know? That's so. how I'm reading it. And honestly, even if it, even if you swap genders and stuff, I still, if it's, if it's in that kind of way, I think it's funny. <laughs> Anyways, hmm. the, the comments are very much thinking that she's an asshole. Okay. Uh, people are saying, you're the asshole, you're probably making the guy feel really uncomfortable with your overly excessive touching and sexual advances. If it's a joke, what's the punchline? Someone said, as, <laughs> someone, someone said, as a straight man, I don't get to go to gay clubs and get all handsy with the women just because they're gay. Huh? What? Like, <laughs> yeah, like he, a straight man wouldn't go to a gay club with, the, with women who are gay and, and be all handsy with them. Be like, oh, but I'm not actually, I don't know. It's still. Got it. Okay. Um, OP, those, 
those would be strangers, not someone who is hopefully your future brother-in-law and is already good friends with you. Uh, that has 1,000 down votes. Um, uh, yeah, the chat, the, the, the comment section was very much against this woman. Yeah, my, my interpretation is not the asshole. Yeah, not the asshole, but if there's boundaries, there's boundaries, I guess. Yeah, it's, this is too, like, gray area. Yeah, I, you know, uh, there was a, there's a point written down here of like, you know, the lack of boundaries some straight people have when interacting with a gay person. I like, was gonna say that, I was gonna, that yeah. is a problem sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes some, some cis women will be like, ooh, gay people, my playthings. And yeah. if it's going into that territory, then I can see where the yeah. noise is coming from. The amount of people that I stopped being friends with when they said the words like, I love my gays. And I was like, you're done. <laughs> I, you, know, you know what, actually, though, my, my interpretation is, as a brother and sister, too, is like, if your brother says, hey, like, this is making me uncomfortable, like, this is my partner, then she should respect that. Yeah, you answer to that. Yeah, and hopefully she does. Um, if she continues after he say, gets mad at her, then she's absolutely an asshole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she can learn from this. Uh, all right. And that's the T. And that's the T. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here's our next story. This comes from R. True Off My Chest. I'm not gay enough for the gays. <laughs> My Did I write this? <laughs> <laughs> My husband and I are at a friend's house to watch RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, here we go. Everyone else is talking about some drag queen. I have no idea what's going on. I just smile and say, work, every few minutes. <laughs> That's how you do it, though. That, yeah. <laughs> Work. That's it. I've felt this way for decades. I've accepted my fate. I hope I'm never found out. All this just to f men. <laughs> Edit. For the record, I like Drag Race. I enjoy it, but I can't hang on the higher level discourse. Definitely don't need new friends. Definitely not ones who are into sports, lol. I was also hitting the Chardonnay pretty hard, and it was a conversation in two languages. Thank you all for the love and support. Uh, <laughs> Conversation in two languages. <laughs> the, we got some comments here. The Gay High Council has decided that you are not gay enough to join this council. For real though, you either like dick or you don't. It's not that hard. Um, I've received judgment from other queer people, particularly the gay guys for some reason, because I'm a lesbian but I look straight. I'm quite feminine and always have been, and for some reason that means I don't deserve to be attracted to women or something. Like I've been openly laughed at and humili humiliated for it. I think it's ironic of this community for disrespecting people who don't seem to fit into it. It's okay not to be into the stereotypical stuff and just be gay. Well, there's plenty of us who feel the same. Uh, someone said the modern Kinsey scale, zero, man having sex with a woman, 0.5, man having sex with a man, six, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 10. Uh, yeah, any, any thoughts on that one? This is always the, the conversation online, like, oh, I don't watch Drag Race. I'm gay, but I, I'm not Drag Race gay. That's, that's what right. people say. Yeah. Um, which I guess that's the new Kinsey scale. Um, yeah. I don't know what to say about it. I mean, it's... <laughs> I'm I, sorry you feel that way, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you said you relate. Like, you, you, I mean, I but I love Drag Race, and I yeah. know all the drag queens. It's like, if that's the singular thing that, like, makes me more gay or less gay, then cool. Have you I don't ever, know. Have you ever been accused of not being gay enough? Have you ever? Uh, I, I don't know. No. However, there's some gay culture stuff that I don't, like, relate sure. to, and... So, so in that way, but I, if that that kind of is just more like a insecurity vibe because mm -hmm. it's like no one is going, you're not gay enough. Yeah, They're, I'm just like, am I? Do I do I fit in in this culture? But it's like, I, I suck. <laughs> 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 it's like I fit in just fine. Sure, this nobody at this <laughs> at this event is is like judging him. Right. Like he could probably say, oh yeah, I don't really get it, and they'd be like, okay, okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's mostly insecurities, and then like maybe one comment here and there will of your insecurities sure. push people over the edge and right. make people frustrated. Right. But yeah, get over it. I don't yeah. Know. yeah, get over it. If you don't want to watch Drag Race, don't watch Drag Race. Watch, um, what else Ted is out Lasso. there? Yeah. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Yes. Yeah. You know. Drink some milk. <laughs> and my favorite line is when he said the Chardonnay made them made speak two different languages. languages. Yeah. Like, as soon as that Chardonnay hit with, oh, cur girl, perp. <laughs> This, yeah, mm, 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 auntie, ooh, death drop. I just like the idea of him sitting there and just after every now and then just like, work. Work. <laughs> just so serious, like, work. Work. That feels work. like if, if I was in his situation sitting there, I'd be like, 
Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Work. <laughs> yes, she yeah. did in fact slay. Wow. <laughs> like she right? slayed. Yeah. <laughs> Am I the asshole for not letting my girlfriend wear her unique dress to a wedding? Okay. <laughs> wedding stuff is always great. Throw away account because she uses Reddit. Uh, this is a 25 year old man. My girlfriend, who's 30, uh, Nat, has a very particular sense of style. Picture Harper Finkel from Wizards of Waverly Place. You will get the idea. Don't get me wrong, I never had a problem with that. In fact, I love the way she dresses because she loves to do so, and I am happy if she is happy. The thing is, sometimes she likes to incorporate memes into her clothes. No problem, it's cute. But now she wants to wear a dress inspired by the meme, gay rat wedding, to my friend's wedding. <laughs> he and his fiance are gay. I told her, maybe that is not really appropriate? The dress in- <laughs> Uh, an ally. <laughs> I think I've seen this meme, but could you describe this meme as best as possible? It's Arthur, right? Yeah. Two, two rats on Arthur got married. Two yeah. two gay rats like got married. Like in the married. last season, the two gay, like the teacher and the like other. His, and like, it, like it, there was like we, there was a bunch of Facebook posts from like mothers and like conservatives about like oh this gay rat wedding, and so it became <laughs> yeah. the meme gay rat gay wedding. Rat wedding. Yeah. <laughs> I love hearing about the, because I definitely heard a lot about that. It's same with the, the Babadook stuff that happened, where I just yeah. feel like I hear about these things, and I'm like, that's f***ing hilarious. The dress in question would be full of little stuffed rats, pride flags, and a big I support gay rats on the front. <laughs> Whoa, we really went. <laughs> what the wow. Uh, for the people. For the people. <laughs> my friend is not a big fan of the way my girlfriend dresses, and I think this dress may cause a certain uproar in the wedding. Now, Nat is upset with me and claiming that I am throwing water in her flame of creativity. The wedding oh. is next month, so she has plenty of time to think about another thing to wear. Should I just let her go with the dress? Am I the asshole in this situation? Wow. She said, uh, the gays love me. That's Gay what that rat. is. <laughs> Stop the rats with pride. Okay. Here's, <laughs> here's why she's the asshole. It's not her wedding. It's not her yeah. wedding. Why are you dressed like that? I was gonna say, you're the asshole if you were thinking of like, I'm gonna do something crazy with my outfit to a wedding. You shouldn't be trying to, to a gain gay wedding. A, a bunch of attention at a wedding. Exactly. Mm. The point is just be like, I'm gonna look nice. I'm gonna look res res like- Respect the yeah, wedding. Yeah, for, for them. Uh, this feels like she's trying to draw a lot of attention, a lot of attention. her way. Oh my God. So I support gay rats. Whew. I mean, save it for pride though. <laughs> yeah. I mean like if She'll you want to- She'll kill it at pride, yeah. <laughs> if you want to be a Looney Tune, like we got, we got a month for you. So someone said, not the asshole. That's very inappropriate for a wedding, not to mention kind of insulting. Mm -hmm. uh, people need to understand they're basically NPCs at a wedding, unless they're immediately closed with the bride and groom, and even then, they're just background characters. Yep. Exactly. I do not think she is necessarily homophobic, just oblivious. The gay rat wedding is in reference to Mr. Ratburn from Arthur. I can see someone obsessed with memes thinking others would find it funny or cute and see it as being supportive, but in reality, it is not. If she does it after being told how hurtful it, it would be, then yeah, she is definitely doing it to be homophobic. There's an update. Well guys, as many of you pointed out in the comments, me getting a throwaway account didn't help. She found the post. <laughs> guess I was too specific after all. I will update soon. Yeah, yeah I guess the problem is probably not many other people were making are wearing gay, gay, rat, rat, gay dress. rat dresses. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was someone else who was doing a gay rat dress. <laughs> um, there's a final update. Oh. Hello everyone. I would like to thank you all for your judgment, advice, and opinions on my post. It was greatly appreciated. So the conversation did not go well. No, no. She was livid with me for exposing her in this way, and although I showed her in the comments, most important, the ones from the LGBTQIA community, she refused to admit that her dress was a poor choice, but in fact her way to appreciate the gays. That did not sit well with me. Love can move mountains, but cannot maintain a relationship with a homophobic. So now I'm going to the wedding as a single rat-free dress man. I did reach out to my friend and send him this post. He thought the situation to be hilarious, but if she did show up in the dress, he would def kick us to the curb. I guess this is all. This is the second Reddit story you've read in front of me where they've broken up because of the story. <laughs> the Ooh. fact that she stood her ground she after really it. She really stood her ground like, okay. and said, I appreciate the gays. 
Yep. She said the thing. She is just... she is my favorite term. <laughs> she she, she <laughs> did. Uh, it's kind of not as severe. Have you ever been dating someone or even been friends with someone that you had to tell them like their their sense of style or something was a little bit much? Or I I feel like all of us are people who are not bothered by how people dress. This is obviously an extreme case. <laughs> Have you ever had to tell someone like if you're going to an event if they were dressing some way to be like, hey, you can't. You shouldn't, you shouldn't. No, I've never been in that spot before. It's a rough situation. I would not be good in that situation. So I wasn't good in that situation. I had, I, we, I was going to a, a wedding and I hadn't bought nice dress clothes in forever because there was never a reason uh, to. And then turns out if you're an adult person, you should probably have dress clothes on you just mm -hmm. in case. So I had to do like a, like a last minute shopping spree and I have a friend who dresses like a cartoon person all the time. And I was taking advice from him because I was just like, I don't know. And he's like, this tie's great. This looks great. I'm like, yeah. And so like I presented, I was like, this is what I'm wearing. What do you think? And he was like, uh, that tie's a little too ridiculous. You look like a teacher. <laughs> and so <laughs> at first I was like, what? I just went shopping. And then I just had to be like, yeah, you know, I actually don't know what I'm doing. So I just had to swallow my pride. But yes, it does, it's, it's, you just have to swallow, you have to be swallow like, your pride. I don't, you're right, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. You have to default to yeah. the opinions of other people. Yeah, and you, you mentioned like that would be great at pride, but even then I guess just, I'm curious, like if a straight person was wearing something like that to even, to pride, would you would you be like, is that is that okay? To pride, yes. Yeah. I guess because it's a meme. But if someone showed up dressed as a meme to my wedding, I would kick him out. Oh, yeah. the wedding is for sure. I just didn't know. Is there other situations where she could wear that dress and you'd be like, that's fine, that's funny. She, could, I mean, she could wear it on a Tuesday. Okay, <laughs> just what like whatever. And I'd be I'd be like, ha, that's crazy. You know, I'm fine You're with insane. it. You get a little snort laugh from me, yeah. and then we'll move on with our lives. Yeah, <laughs> gay rats broke up a relationship. That's uh. pretty wild. All right, today I f***ed up telling my dad I have never had sex. Mm. Um, this is a 20 year old man. Uh, a few days ago I decided to visit my dad at his house. It was his birthday. I showed up with wine, we got a little drunk, maybe more than a little. When my dad was done going on and on about how much he missed my mom since she divorced him, he changed the subject and focused on my love life. He asked if I had a girlfriend and I said no. Then he asked if I've ever had a girlfriend because he's never seen me with a girl. I said never. My dad poured the last drop of wine in my glass and asked if I was still a virgin. I was tempted to lie, but I paused too long, so I said yes. My dad said I had no reason to feel ashamed about my virginity, but encouraged me to have as much sex as possible before I end up married to a person whose vagina comes with an impenetrable encryption. I ignored the obvious reference to my mom's you-know-what and called it a night. This family is f***ed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this, is some, this is a Resident Evil family. Uh, <laughs> I asked my dad if I was allowed to sleep in the spare bedroom because I didn't want to drive home drunk. My dad said I was more than welcome. I must have been sleeping for less than an hour before I woke up to the sound of my dad knocking on the door. Oh, no. I don't remember what I mumbled as I opened my eyes, but the moment my dad heard my voice, he entered my room with another person. Oh, no. It was a girl. My dad oh. introduced her by name, but did the air quotes thing with his fingers to imply that it was a fake name. I could tell my dad was still drunk. Oh, no. Exhibit A, he continued making the air quote gesture even when it was no longer necessary. Not gonna lie, I was still drunk too, but not drunk enough to disregard the weird that was happening. Without giving me proper time to react, my dad quickly said the girl knew exactly what to do before closing the door on his way out. The girl did not know what to do. She did nothing other than awkwardly waiting for me to say something. I eventually asked her what was going on and she said my dad hired her to sleep with me. I died of embarrassment, especially when the girl asked me to explain if I was on the zero experience or the some experience end of the virgin spectrum. Without thinking, I said I was gay. It was the first time I actually said it out loud. The girl sat down on the bed and asked if I was a top or a bottom. I shrugged and said, I didn't know yet. <laughs> My face must have been so red at that moment. The girl said if I was willing to go shower, then she would basically be willing to motorboat my butt. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm using that terminology next time. <laughs> Motorboat my butt. <laughs> On an adventure. To be honest, I considered it. 
I'm human, I'm horny. However, the, the situation was way too weird for me to be completely comfortable doing something that sexual with someone I didn't know at all. I said thank you, but no thank you to the girl and apologized for my dad putting both of us in an awkward position. She said she understood and for some reason thought it was necessary to mention that my dad was uh, one of their regular customers. <laughs> Are we surprised? She, <sighs> she made it clear for the record that she never had sex with my dad, but explained that some of her older coworkers at the escort service really enjoyed spending time with him. She, she said, she can't wait to tell the other sex workers that she met me because apparently my dad loves to talk about his son with the people he pays to f mm -hmm. I was not psychologically prepared for the unexpected discussion regarding my dad's sex life. The girl had a severe case of motor mouth. When she finally stopped talking, I learned that my dad sleeps with sex workers who kind of look like my mom and that women closing their eyes with too much food in their mouth and saying, hmm, turns him on. <laughs> You'd think at some point he'd have been like, you know what, we should stop. We don't need to talk anymore. That is so specific. The girl apologized for abusing my good listening skills and asked if there was nothing she could do for me. I said she could keep my sexuality between the two of us. She said her, li she said her lips were sealed until the time comes to suck c <laughs> Ah, me. <laughs> My dad was passed out in the living room when we approached the front door. I went back to the bed uh, when the girl was gone and eventually fell asleep. The following morning, I confronted my dad. I said I didn't appreciate what he did and made sure he understood that he wasted his money because nothing happened. My dad was apologetic and promised never to cross that line again, no matter how much alcohol was involved. Despite his apology, the mood was still somewhat tense. I decided to break the tension by closing my eyes and saying, Hmm, while eating breakfast. <laughs> the look on my dad's face was priceless. I lost my appetite soon afterwards because I instantly regretted doing something that might arouse my father. Oh my God. That the layers. was crazy. Uh, <laughs> the comments here, uh, uh, the only thing I'm confused about is if you are actually gay and decided to just admit it or if you lied about it because of how awkward the situation was. No offense intended, mind you, just curious. I was being honest about my sexuality. I never planned to share that information with the sex worker, but I panicked and acted without really thinking. Strange enough, when she offered to play with my butt, I did get a little turned on, which is kind of confusing because I've never been sexually attracted to the opposite sex. If I learned anything from this experience, it's that I should probably stop focusing on labels. Uh, and start playing with his butt. Yeah, you know? Uh, let someone motorboat your butt. Uh, <laughs> This kid is a serious comedian. The delivery is just spot on. I'm giggling like an idiot 15 minutes later. Uh, someone else said, don't know, if, don't know if you're a top or bottom? Let's find out. It's rare to find a professional who still has enthusiasm for the craft. <laughs> 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 okay, quick question. Do you, do you guys feel comfortable or have you ever talked about your, your love life with your parents? Not really, no. Yeah, God, no. I never would. <laughs> I mean, like, not... There's something well, wrong with is, that guy. This is but crazy. dad is like not okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like I don't talk about like, f sure. but I talk about you know, my love life. You know, we're like, you know, how's Kevin? I'm like, okay. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. The relationship, but I guess the the sex life stuff. No, no. I think some people do, and mm. I I can't fathom it. Yeah, this that, is crazy. The G forces in this story um, was. Yeah. Oh my God, we have a huge update here. Oh God. Oh, no. uh... Update today. I up expecting a sex word to keep what happened between us private. Uh, the inevitable happened. The sex worker my dad hired to terminate my virginity in the dead of night did not keep her mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I shouldn't, I should have seen it coming. When I shared my original post, I was convinced my dad didn't know I was gay. I never said anything to anyone about my sexuality other than to the sex worker who teamed up with my father to unexpectedly put me in a vulnerable position. My dad and I have been avoiding each other since that night. Not gonna lie, I was okay with that. We needed space. The words divorced dad, virgin son, and sex worker should never be in the same sentence. Thank you. This, 
This morning, my dad showed up at my apartment, unusual but not surprising. He was courteous enough to call beforehand, asked if I was available, said he wanted to talk. I assumed he was still feeling bad about ambushing me with a sex worker and wanted to make sure that our relationship was intact. Little did I know that my dad's primary objective was to establish if his 20-year-old son was sexually attracted to other people's 20-year-old sons. As soon as my dad made himself at home in my living room, he asked if we were alone. I said my roommate was at the gym. My dad's response was to drop the following line. Sharing an apartment with a guy who works out must be motivating. Slow clap, subtle as fuck, my father. He didn't even need to wink at the camera. My dad asked if my roommate had a girlfriend. I implied that he had girls that come and go. My dad said my roommate must be handsome to get so much attention. I shrugged and said, or he's paying for it. It was a joke, an uncomfortable <laughs> joke based on my dad's disturbed expression. My dad said he could explain the sex workers and answer all my questions if I was prepared to listen. I said, I said it was none of my business and he didn't owe me an explanation, but I did suggest that he at least considered therapy. My dad said he was proud of the person I've become and promised to think about my suggestion. As wholesome as that moment was, the gay elephant was still in the room. So I awkwardly asked my dad if he recently communicated with the sex worker he hired to sleep with me. My dad said no because he wanted to respect my privacy and avoid crossing the line again. Based on all the random references to my roommate's attractiveness, I was convinced my dad heard I was gay from one of the other sex workers who heard it from the sex worker with the motor mouth. We danced around the topic of my sexuality for a little longer because it was still a big moment despite all the weird shit that happened the last time my dad and I were under the same roof. I eventually came out and said, Dad, I'm gay. My dad stood up and showed me he was wearing socks with rainbow stripes to celebrate the news. <laughs> I, did, I, I didn't even notice his socks until he lifted the leg opening of his pants. He said it was a gift from the sex workers. He had another pair of rainbow socks in his pocket, which he gave to me when we were done hugging. I suppose the outcome could have been worse. I doubt there will be another update. So thank you for riding this wave with me. Um, uh, I relate to this because I was dating my boyfriend before he came out of the closet. And when he came out of the closet, um, his mom gifted us rainbow socks, so. Oh, really? You know, Aww. it's just, it's, it's the bridge of allyship, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It all starts with the feet. It all starts with the feet. That's that's the first test when you tell your parents you're gay. It's like, do they have the socks on? Do they have socks? Are they gonna give me the socks? This Florida project as ass family <laughs> needs to like take a breather. Um, I'm glad it ended well for them. Is this dad a good dad or a bad dad? Because there, it it really there's levels on this. this like is... he was ultimately. Kind of like awesome at the end, but boy, there's this some. This is a dad with no boundaries, you there... know, and that can lead to a lot of trauma. This is a dad of extremes. Yeah, he's extremely everything. It feels like he's got good intentions. Yeah, but he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just kind of like, For oh sure. yeah, yeah, here you go. It's like, <laughs> it's like, wake up, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Comment said weirdly wholesome and yet so so awkward. I mean, <laughs> there are worse reactions to people coming out. It's nice that the dad accepted him. Although the OP would have preferred a less scarring way to come out. Uh, someone said, well, the dad is five kinds of fucked up, but at least he's an ally, I guess. That, uh, my gosh, that could be a movie. Yeah. That, that was a lot. It was a lot. A lot going movie. on. That really could, boy. Me and my escort. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the assholes so far, we haven't gotten like extremely awful assholes. Am I right for saying that? I feel like these are just very oblivious people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's people not reading the room, not, you know, answering to societal norms. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. Am I the asshole for not having my niece be the flower girl at a wedding? Okay. Mm -hmm. First sentence is, I am bi. Hence the username. The username is token bi friend. So, I am a woman. The person I am engaged to is also a woman. This is relevant because my sister, Amanda, hates both things. She and her husband, John, are both homophobic. So during the process of planning our wedding party for our wedding next May, the idea of having my niece be the flower girl was never even brought up. Instead, we pretty quickly chose my fiance's little cousin for that role. My sister found out that her daughter isn't going to be the flower girl and is absolutely livid about it. She insisted that my fiance, Jane, had forced me to choose her cousin over my niece. That my niece was the obvious choice and I should change it. You may say, why not just have two flower girls? 
Well, I suggested that as a compromise to Amanda, but she hates that idea too. The main issue I, I have with making my niece the flower girl is that I can't be sure she will even be there. To be honest, I didn't even know until recently if they would even come to the wedding at all. Still not sure, honestly, their tolerance levels fluctuate on who they've been around. And even if they did, I would have assumed they wouldn't want their daughter a part of it. Who knows if everything will be fine leading up to the wedding and then the day of Amanda and John decide to be homophobic. I know I sure don't. Somehow my sister has gotten my parents on her side and my mom says I'm being bitter because I wasn't invited to my sister's wedding. I'm pretty sure that's not it, though I was hurt at the time to not be invited. Part of me still is, but I don't think I would try to punish my niece over it, which seems to be what my mom is trying to imply. I just, I don't understand like not inviting someone to your wedding, but then feeling like you have jurisdiction over their wedding. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. The OP responded to some comments. Was your mom against two flower girls? Uh, oh no, sorry, my mom thought the two flower girls option was fine, but she adores my niece, which is fair, I do too. So I know that her bias has at least some part to do with her siding with my sis. And to be fair, my mom also was upset about me not getting invited to my sister's wedding. More about my sis. Uh, I don't know, I didn't come out until I was 20 and she was my best friend up to that point. Like I said, their tolerance fluctuates. Some days are better. It's been almost 10 years and I just got used to it, I guess. It helps that no one else in my family is the same way, but I also hope she stops being that way someday. Well, Damn. respect is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I'm not invited to your wedding, then no, I'm not gonna, yeah. you can't control my wedding at all. <laughs> no, that seems completely fair. Um, that's, I, I don't know, I, I, I can't fathom this. Obviously I have no personal, like, I, I don't know, it's also tough for me. I, I, it must be so hard to like, your best friend, your sister, to suddenly just like flip on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It must be rough. It's, I mean, I don't know, what do you think about her continuing to like, maintain a, a friendship and relationship with her sister, despite her sister clearly being such an asshole? I mean, it's tough when it's family, mm -hmm. because it's like, you you know, it's that's the hardest thing to like let go of or separate yourself from. Mm -hmm. However, there's, I'm, I mean, I'm lucky that I had, I have a very small family and they're all accepting so this didn't happen. Sure. But many people who have siblings, parents, whatever, that are, you know, like they reject people, homo like they're homophobic or whatever. I have friends who got married and the parents were like, well, I don't accept that you are having like a lesbian wedding. And they were like, great, well then you're not coming to the wedding. And like, and they were like, oh, Oh, and then by the time the wedding happened, they were like, you know, it, it, like them being forced out of the narrative made them like reconsider why they didn't want to come. And then they were just like, you know, we're sorry that we were homophobic. Like we want to be Aww. at your wedding, you're my daughter. You know what I mean? So it's Aww. like that path happens often where it's like you have to be like, well, fuck you then. And then they go, man, maybe it's not as deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is sad that it requires so many people to like literally have it be right in front of them, someone they care about to suddenly be like, oh, this is fucked up, what I'm doing. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, um, damn. Uh, well, there's an update. Okay. <laughs> it's 2.5 years later. Oh my God. Oh. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. A few years ago, I posted this here on Am I the Asshole about my sister making a fuss about my niece not being the flower girl at my wedding. No one has asked for it, but I wanted to share this update anyway because you guys really helped out a lot. So I took a few people's advice about having both my niece and my then fiance's now wife's cousin being the flower girl without letting my sister know there would be two. Uh, the day of the wedding and only the day of the wedding and only my sister and niece showed up. Brother-in-law was nowhere to be seen. My sister was a little surprised about the two flower girls, but then surprised me even more by talking about how having two was such a cute idea. My sister was super sweet all through the reception and I felt like I had my old sister back, which was so, so, so nice. We had a chance to talk in a way that we hadn't in years and we spent a little time going over the whole flower girl thing and my sister was embarrassed and apologized. Without Aww. getting too much into things, my sister left my brother a few months after our wedding and she confided in me that part of her decision came from seeing how differently my wife interacted with me and our family members when compared to her husband. Basically, ex-brother-in-law was not a good person to my sister, an understatement, and she is so much happier now. She's like she was at the reception, like my old sister who is full of life and caring and sweet and an absolute awesome mom. But the biggest reason why I wanted to share this update was because my sister and I have had a lot of long talks since the wedding and the whole flower girl ordeal. All of it stemmed from my ex-brother-in-law and his asshole-ishness asshole is, I think, 
Mm -hmm. um, Assholisms. Assholisms. <laughs> he did plan on causing a scene by not allowing my sister or my niece to come to the wedding. Apparently, it was like a three-hour fight before my sister was able to leave for the ceremony. The biggest surprise came when we had a long talk after her divorce started. Me, my sister, and my wife, and my sister kept asking a lot of questions. Most of them centered around us being women who are bi or attracted to women. The next night, my sister came out as bi to the both of us. <laughs> yep. Three weeks after that, without knowing, our sister came out, our younger brother came out to the family as Pan. Anyway, I just wanted to thank everyone for their advice and their kind words. I have my best friend and sister back. I am so very happy, happily married to the most awesome woman in the world. And I get to go with my best friend, my awesome wife, and our super cool Pan brother to Pride this year. Things get better, and it's okay to give people you love a chance. It's Woo! a party in the family. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That That's, got me like really emotional. In that was about. crazy. I was like, yeah. oh my gosh. And then the brother's like, and also, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, some comments here. Um, some more about this uh, sister and her ex and sister not inviting her to the wedding. That's still an ouch area for us, but 100% because of the influence of her ex uh, for the no invite. I'll probably be maid of honor at the next wedding. Uh, on a serious note, from our discussions afterwards, there was a lot of internalized homophobia that developed when she was first questioning. It got worse over time. I think my own coming out actually triggered it to get worse, and then she met her now ex, and he really did make it exponentially worse because he would feed into those internalized feelings and make her feel worse and worse. And part of her own actions and words were, I'm sure, to play into the narrative that her ex established. It kept the peace at home, behind closed doors, and he got into her head so bad, she probably started believing it herself at some point. Mm -hmm. um, has this apologized for leaving you out of her wedding? Yes, she has. There was a lot of painful discussions and healing that I chose to leave out of the update for the sake of brevity. Maybe I scapegoat my ex-brother-in-law for things that I know my sister did participate in, but again, without getting into too much because it is her story to tell and not mine, he got in her head and changed some wires. Fear and manipulation and control can make you do some crazy things, and that man had a way of instilling fear and manipulation and terrible control over her. I only wish that she hadn't had to live like that for as long as she did. And thank you, I'm so very happy to have her back. Whew. This person is mentally healthy as f Yeah, <laughs> man, God damn. Good on this person. Like, they, holy cow. Okay, the, she also added, uh, once my sister came out to the rest of the family, it felt a little like that Spider-Man meme with her and our brother pointing at each other. <laughs> Oh man, question I guess to pose here is like, have you ever had, has at any moment in your life have you suddenly realized that you were surrounded by more queer people than you you thought? Because that that this happened to her, where she suddenly went from being the one gay sibling to suddenly all of them. Defy era Smosh, I was like, is it just me? And uh, then yeah. and then like <laughs> mythical happened, and I was like, is it just? <laughs> and then you know it was just like oh there's just like the four of us that it was like wait no we got a gay ass company <laughs> so that definitely was like a, a big fun time nice uh yeah but not in any other setting that i can yeah. remember do you have any gay siblings no i wish uh, <laughs> what a vibe <laughs> <laughs> what a vibe we can share but. secrets no um <laughs> Usually I like to kind of keep track of who's the biggest asshole, and, and it feels like the ex-brother-in-law is the biggest asshole. That mm -hmm. guy's a yeah. monster. Yeah. Um, okay, next story. R. True off my chest. I'm so tired of pretending my brother-in-law isn't gay. <laughs> I have no problem with gay people. If he came out, absolutely nothing would change between us or his family. He lives with his boyfriend, and they are openly trying to adopt a baby together. They share a damn bed in a two-bedroom house. They still tell everyone that they are just friends and pretend to be looking for girlfriends while neither have ever even asked a girl out in their lives. How long am I supposed to go along with this? I know it's rude to out someone, but it's just so annoying hearing them act offended when a stranger or new acquaintance correctly assumes they're a couple. Um, someone's commented, just really That was good it? That's a, this is a short one. That's a hit. <laughs> I was uh, hoping for like an ending, like a resolution. <laughs> uh, someone commented, just really good friends who are being frugal. They sleep in the same bed to save on the heating bill. Uh, someone said, uh, I'm genuinely curious, why does it bug you? Is it because you can't call them boyfriends? I don't know if I've ever s witnessed that personally of like someone literally being a couple. Like are they even, they were talking about like being a couple trying to adopt a child. They're trying to adopt being... a baby together, but they're like, yeah, but we're just friends. Sorry, what are we talking about? <laughs>
That's what this guy was saying. So he's saying his they're brother. They're trying to adopt a baby? They're trying to adopt a yeah. child. Yeah. But they're just friends. But they're just friends. History will say they're best friends. I have no problem with gay people. If he came out, absolutely nothing would change between us or his family. He lives with his boyfriend, who is, but he says his friend. And they are openly trying to adopt a baby together. They share a damn bed in a two-bedroom house. I they still that. tell everyone that they are just friends and pretend to be looking for girlfriends, while neither have ever even asked a girl out in their lives. While sharing a bed. While sharing a bed in a two-bedroom. Looking for girlfriends. Some people... You need to just let them do it. I my yeah. when I was growing up and like still to this day my my parents are best friends with them across the street. I had lesbian neighbors. Now they've li they lived together for forty years, mm -hmm. and they're these two. I mean they're like hey, you know, it's, they're just like <laughs> <laughs> they're like hey, hey, Tommy, yeah, you totally. Know? I get what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and it's you know they're That's the level they're, of lesbian. They're like they're like hey. <laughs> On paper, you're like, you're like, uh huh. Like the, they're and very so, hey, lesbian. Hey, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they're so that like, level of lesbian where they're old Italian. <laughs> exactly. Hey. hey. We were always just like, yeah, of course, they're like our lesbian neighbors. Whatever. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then one point we were, I, I forget, it just came up so like lightly. We were just like, yeah. So when you two like, I don't know. I don't even how we just basically were. We were just like, so you're a couple in the way that we're. And they they both went what? We were like. What? <laughs> we, were, we were. Everyone went. Oh no, are we wrong? And it's like they share a bed, they have a house together, mm -hmm. they have dogs together, and it's like we don't know what's happening in the bed. And if you know, it's we, it's maybe just like a that's not the label we want thing. Mm -hmm. I yeah, don't know. That's fair. And you just have to be like, sure, you know what? Whatever. Let's play poker and drink. And that's what my parents do with them, and it's fun. Yeah. But maybe they're just so afraid of like the reaction that they're just like, no, 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 absolutely not. What about this? What if they're actually not gay? What if they're Is just that possible? What if they're just two buddies? They just share a bed because it's cheaper. Yeah. In a two bedroom apartment. <laughs> they yeah, don't have to like look, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Let's adopt a baby together. I gotta be honest, if if two straight dudes living in a house together wanted to adopt a baby, I'd be like, I don't know about that. Like two two straight dudes who are just friends. That I'm sounds like, like nah. a Seth Rogen film. It really does sound like <laughs> it really does. Mm -hmm. You know what's tough is he's talking about his brother in law. The issue is we don't know about the other perspectives from the rest of the family in this. Mm -hmm. And like we don't really know. Maybe the maybe the brother in law has a better inkling of like what this might be like mm -hmm. in the family. Maybe I feel like it's more telling because the first sentence that it starts with, I have no problem with gay people. I feel like that kind of shapes how the family dynamic might be totally. if you have to start that out. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is a, a deeper there situation. Because mm -hmm. it might also, might also be like, they're not gonna get shunned, but they're just, they just don't wanna be treated differently. Like they just yeah. wanna like, hey, we just we, like, can we just keep things as they are? And they're worried if they, f they put the label on it that it's gonna become a whole thing. Everyone's mm -hmm. gonna be wearing rainbow socks. It's just gonna be <laughs> yes. a, a situation. That's honestly probably what it is. They're just trying not to ruffle the feathers. They, they've yeah. found a, a line that they can stay at and not cause any problems. So they're yeah. gonna stay there. Interesting. Well. No assholes there, maybe, really. Maybe we'll get an update at some point that they're just friends. Okay, another true off my chest. I regret giving my trans husband the money for his bottom surgery. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. This is on a throwaway account because I can foresee all the transphobic comments that I want no association with on my main account and I don't condone or agree with any of them. I, a 42 year old man, have been married to my husband who's 41 for 16 years. I have known I was bisexual since my early 20s. I met my husband pre-transition and he has always liked men only. We went into the marriage as husband and wife but deep down I think we both knew he was trans. Eight years ago, when it became more widely accepted to be transgender, he came out. Obviously, as a bisexual man, the transition had no effect on our relationship or my feelings for him. I've supported him every step of the way. I was, and still am, in love with him. His immediate family wasn't supportive, although over the last few years his parents have re-entered his life and begun rekindling their relationship with him. We are financially stable, we have paid off our house, a car each, and no kids, so all our income is either spent on living comfortably or saved up. He has been on T for years and had his top surgery three years ago. In 2021, my mother passed after a long battle with lung cancer. Mm -hmm. I inherited a large sum of money from her as she had no siblings, was divorced and only had two children. It was easily enough money for my husband's bottom surgery and I was more than happy to give him the money. He had his surgery two months ago. 
Last week, my husband told me he wants a divorce. He said he is grateful for the love and support I've given him all these years and that I'll always have a special place in his heart. But now he has fully transitioned. He wants to be able to go and date and have the full gay man experience. I can't help but feel like it's my fault. I poured my heart and soul into a marriage that I thought would last forever and it's been taken from me through an act of my own kindness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. um, Tricky. I mean, I've, I've experienced that before. Friends that have like transitioned and like our friendship kind of like naturally died off. Because usually when people like transition, they like want to experience an entire new life, want to like experience like who they truly are. Yeah. And like they'll cut off a lot of people from their previous life, <clears throat> not like because they hate them, just because they want to like, you know, develop something new, you know? And yeah. it's like kind of like a natural mental movement, I guess. Yeah. Um, also, I just recently found um, a 3D diagram of how bottom surgery works, and it is you, very fascinating. Can you forward me that? They turn, one of the balls is a pump. <gasps> huh. It's really cool. That's really cool. <laughs> um, I will forward it to you. I want to see that. I was like, oh, I always, always wondered, always I, had questions. You know, and I, I see what you're saying, and I think that's true even for, like, you know, in many ways in relationships where, like, someone goes through something big of kind of realizing who they are. And it doesn't have to be transitioning. It can be just like, oh, I realize that the life that I'm living is not what I love. And I, they, be, they kind of, then you kind of become a new person. Mm -hmm. And it's tough, even if you still love that person, it's like, but I'm, you kind of have to restart a relationship or it's like, no, this doesn't work for me. I, I don't see any issues with any of this other than I guess I, I see, but I see the issue of like, okay, this person paid for the whole That's thing. The only and thing. then it's like, all right, thank you for that, now I'm out. It's like, mm -hmm. right. wait, did you, but maybe they didn't know they were gonna feel this way. Clearly they didn't. Like, I, I think I it's like think it was a revelation are. afterwards, but they're also not really stating anything of like, hey, and I know you you paid for this entirely. Okay, so six six thousand to twenty four thousand dollars. The, the surgery can be, um, obviously I'm assuming health insurance probably doesn't cover it in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. um, I just wonder, like, 16 years is a lot, and mm -hmm. I understand, like, clearly he didn't know that he was going to want to go yeah. date and, like, be this thing. It's like, I wish they could have, make like, opened the relationship or something to just kind of, like, let that happen. But overall, this just kind of feels like it kind of just happened that way. And the title of, like, I regret doing it, it's like, it's not your mm -hmm. fault. I mean, it, it's not like this needed to happen. This, this is what they wanted, and it's like, you know, I don't know. I guess I, I, I see that. Like, I understand that, but I also understand the absolute pain that would cause. Um, comments are, dude, it's not your fault he took advantage of your kindness. Your soon-to-be ex-husband sounds selfish, and I hope you find someone better because you deserve it. I don't know, yeah, see, because I, I kind of see it more like, I, I think it was a revelation he had after mm -hmm. the yeah. surgery, and I think it was like, F like, oh my God, I have to go do this. Um, what I also wonder is, now that they're trans, like, I wonder if if just the husband is always going to be a reminder of like it's, which it's, husband the the the, the trans uh, like now that they are fully in the body that they that is theirs they they but they every time they're with their husband they're going to be like but we got married uh, when mm -hmm. I was it's going to be hard that, like yeah. I I get that there might be like it might just be like I can't let go of my old life is part of this like you. I I yeah. can't restart a new thing with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like I could almost see this person going out and having the full gay man experience for a few years and then Coming back. being able to be like, I could now do this because I'm now, now it's like a restart. Some other comments are, he could have had the full gay man experience with you, his loss and yours. I'm so sorry, you did this for your future together. You literally set him free. His decision is not your fault. You gave him a gift and he is throwing your kindness back in your face. Repeat, not your fault. Someone else said, take him to court for the money back. That's so wrong. You were just trying to help him, uh, help make him comfortable, but he completely took advantage of that. I See, yeah, see I, I don't, s obviously we have limited information, mm -hmm. but I just don't see it as malicious. No. I'm really mm -hmm. seeing this as like truly inner conflict, like, f like right. um I mean, if, if he was like, thanks for the surge, <laughs> then it's like, the you're an story. asshole. And I'm very curious if there were conversations, like this is a recent post, I'm curious if there's conversations about the financial aspect. Like mm -hmm. that's that's the only thing that I'm going like, hey, like, you know, uh, but people have different opinions on it. Next post. Uh, this comes from our advice, 
but then was reposted on R Am I the Devil. So oh, okay. that's a that's a leap. Huge. That's a leap I've never <laughs> seen before. Possibly asexual getting married. I had some sex as a teenager, but never enjoyed it. Really, I hated it from the first time, but I kept trying it since I thought I was just with the wrong person or not good at it. Despite my lack of interest in sex, I always have wanted a wife and a family. I also do really enjoy being with women from a friendship and romantic standpoint. I just didn't like the sex part. Because of my disinterest in such activity, I decided in my early 20s to just date women who were saving themselves for marriage, as that would be the perfect arrangement for me. That was a good decision, but now that I am engaged, I have been having some worries about it again. Mm -hmm. I suspect that I may be asexual, but honestly, I am really hoping that I just was not mature enough when I first started and that I will end up enjoying it with someone I love in the context of marriage. Any advice for a guy like me? Uh, Any so advice I for guess a guy I see, like me? Um, <laughs> So he's dating someone who's saving herself for marriage, which means this girl has the hopes that her husband will be the only person she has sex with. They're gonna have sex, she will lose uh, his virginity to him, and then her choice will be either to live in a sexually unsatisfying marriage forever, or divorce and go find someone else. It feels so man manipulative because he already knows how his fiance feels about sex and how important the commitment must be to her. He's the one deceiving her by omission. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, fingers crossed that the 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 woman who's saving herself for marriage is also asexual. They yeah. both they both do it, and they're like, oh, oh that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Let's do in vitro. <clears throat> get this over with. Yeah, it's interesting that he can't just be kind of open about this. Yeah. Because um, I I feel like there there is a community there, and he could definitely meet someone else who's like, yeah, I'm not into that. Absolutely. Like, Great. Cool. You are not being honest with the woman you are going to marry, so I can't be sure you are honest with this post. Did you have a traumatic experience with sex? Were you abused or are you, ase or, or are you asexual? You need to discuss all of this with your future wife in great detail. You have been doing the easy thing. Now you have to do the hard thing, the real thing, the honest thing. OP responded to that saying, after my first time, the girl told a bunch of people that I didn't finish and started crying afterwards, which was true, but still something I think she should have kept to herself. I don't know if that was traumatic enough to cause me to become asexual, but I would say that as each subsequent time went poorly, I did get progressively more in my own head about my inability and lack of enjoyment, which had a snowballing effect until I started dating only girls who didn't want to have sex while dating. I think this uh, this person needs to go to therapy. Didn't finish, then cried afterwards? Yeah. That, you know, that, that's, that's therapy. Yeah. <laughs> they need to go to a, ther a sex therapist and mm -hmm. talk this out and figure out. And find out. out if they are asexual or if yeah. they just are scared Don't. that they're not gonna c again. Nothing wrong with not c Yeah, yeah. it's okay to be c shy. We, yeah. we all are sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Yeah, too tired, sometimes. too early in the morning. Sometimes it just yeah. be like a drip and you're like, oh no. You're like, honestly, didn't have enough water. <laughs> uh, doesn't a, happen there's sometimes. A, there's a drought. You shouldn't marry someone you haven't had these full honest conversations with. I, I think like, you know, people decided to, to I'm curious because I'm obviously not religious, but like people who are waiting till after marriage, I think they should still have in-depth talks about sex and what they think they would want out of it and mm -hmm. stuff. Like, it, you know, if you're not having sex, you should still talk about it. Right, it can't be a mystery and, until and it Exactly, happens. like your ideas about it, your boundaries, how you'd want to go into it. Um, the solution to this is the solution to like 99% of every problem, which is just, let's talk about it. Talk, talk about, about it. it. Talk about it. Except for the dad who uh, talks a little too much. Man, we're gonna, and he needs to he stop needs, talking. He needs to yeah, dial it back. To mm -hmm. Talk to somebody else. <laughs> somebody else. <laughs> talk to anybody else, yeah. please. Am I the asshole for telling my daughter she wasn't gay? <laughs> okay. Interesting. Me to everybody. <clears throat> You're not gay. Uh, I, I am. I'm the only gay here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else. Nobody else. How dare you? I, 46 female. I'm a lesbian and I've been with my wife for 20 years. We have three children together. Uh, age is 18, her name's Brie, 16 uh, male and tw 12 male. Uh, Brie is in college and has recently started dating this girl, Nala. They've been together for about two months. Nala is a nice girl, I met her once, but Brie has never had any interest in women. Her whole childhood was her obsessing over Justin Bieber or One Direction. Her whole room was filled with posters of them. She knew she could be comfortable coming out if she was. Uh, she's made comments to her brother how it feels weird kissing her and she doesn't know how their moms do it. My wife and I both agreed that this was just college experimenting. I know this is a new world, but I also know my daughter. 
a few days ago we were on the phone and Bree told me Nala was telling her she should quit her extracurricular and focus on her major. I reminded her that without soccer she has no scholarship and how she expected to pay for that. Well, of course, Nala has the idea on how to handle it. We got into a pretty heated argument over it. She said something to me like, you guys don't care about my mental health like Nala does. I snapped and told her, stop saying that, you're not even gay. Oh. She got upset and called me a mega asshole and accused me of being homophobic, even though I'm gay. (laughs) Me. (laughs) (laughs) Told me she was dropping soccer and hung up the phone. She won't return my calls or texts and she lives four hours away on campus. I got a little crazy and looked Nala up on Facebook and texted her asking her to have Bree to get back to me. And Nala left me on scene. Oops. This upsets me because I never meant to put my input in. She can love who she wants to love. I want her happy. But I do think she's moving extremely too fast into unknown waters. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> let her explore. Let her, let her taste some fruit. I don't know. Yeah, I explain mean. explain it. I get it, you're lesbian parents, so you're like, I know what gay is. I think it's, you're an asshole for saying that. Mm-hmm. I get that the, I guess the the drama is like, oh, how are you gonna pay for your scholarship if this, whatever. It's just like, girlfriend, boyfriend, them friend, whatever. It's like, if you just have like a bad influence, that's the problem. It's like, mm-hmm. this person is yeah. gonna make you in debt. But she, I don't know. She, she, I think she had justification for being, like the mom being concerned and stuff about like, hey, this friend is trying to convince you out of something that's going to f- you over exactly. in the future. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Keep the conversation on that. The saying you're not even gay thing. Bad. Really sucks. And it also completely derailed the point uh, that mm-hmm. she was trying to get across. Exactly. Now, now it's definitely out the window. Right. Um, there's some comments here. Uh, Yup, you're the asshole. From one 40-something lesbian to another, you screwed up. You don't get to gatekeep what being gay means. You don't get to define what your daughter's sexuality is for her. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how open you are at home. It doesn't matter if you are right. It doesn't matter if your parents were homophobic assholes who threw you out and you made sure this kid could feel loved and accepted every day. It doesn't matter if she is experimenting. It is her journey. Imagine if you were experimenting and claiming a label that felt safe and your mom said to you, but you aren't really straight. Also, she may in fact be gay, she may not. She's 18, she may just be starting to sort out romantic and sexual attraction. And while we're at it, Justin Bieber looks like half of the lesbians I banged in college, so his picture in her locker is proof of nothing. Yeah, I was gonna say, just having like, pictures of Justin Bieber in one direction, I feel like that's more like a, a cultural oppression yeah. than right. I almost, else. You could almost say anything that's like hyper popular is just like, that's them just trying to fit in. Yeah, like, basically. That could be yeah. anything. Um, Wow, uh, ha- have you guys ever felt like? Obviously, I don't, I don't know, but Never have you ever felt, felt gay all the time? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever felt gatekept, or have you ever seen gatekeeping, like personally, like? Sorry, all I could think about was spelling gatekeeping G A Y T. Nice. <laughs> Put on a shirt. Uh. <laughs> That's pretty great. I don't know. Have you ever felt gatekept from gayness? Gate-kept. I mean, on on the internets, on the on the TikToks and all that stuff, there's a lot of gatekeeping that goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I TikTok's never crazy. Felt yeah, TikTok. TikTok Everybody on TikTok is crazy. TikTok be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest people from every community that ever existed <laughs> is there on TikTok, In the comments, gatekeeping yeah. their community. I think it's like if you surround yourself with. Or, you know, it's like, I didn't have gay parents. I didn't have, you know, any gay people around me until mm-hmm. College, basically, well, high school, but barely. Um, so it's like I didn't have anyone to be like, you can't, you can't do that, or it's like you're not this or whatever. Right. I, so it's like I feel like it's a certain circumstance to which you are gay, gate kept because at a certain yeah. point you're like, I'll do whatever I want. Actually, that's such a that's that's such a unique situation. It is like yeah, yeah this is the opposite of what we hear from most people. Mm-hmm. Like it, it circles back, you know, <laughs> the, the, the guy gatekeeping himself who's just like work yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the difference being that he's saying that to he's himself his versus head. his friends being like you don't like rupaul you're not gay yeah. you know it's yeah. like yeah. get him um i like the duck what's the duck name it's just a just a random design a duck i love it though it's there's a big great. there's a big duck on the back all right now i want to see the big duck on the back yeah it's it's look, <laughs> look oh my god big duck oh it's a very big uh, duck Better walk that duck. Drag race people! Drag race! Work? Yes, there we go. 
an ally. <laughs> I'm clipping that. <laughs> I'm using that. <laughs> Work. <laughs> Work. <laughs> Work. If you don't love yourself, how the hell are you going <laughs> to Don't worry. <laughs> if you don't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? Uh, okay. So I've heard legend of this story. I'm very excited about it. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, this is a best of Redditor updates. Um, Am I the asshole for starting a house project without discussing it with my wife? My wife, Amy, who's 27, and my I- My wife. 27, my wife. Hot <laughs> My wife. <laughs> Amy, 27, and I, 27, have a spare room in our home. We've gone back and forth since we moved in two plus years ago about what we wanted to do with it, but we never took the initiative to actually implement any of these plans. We already have a sufficient number of guest rooms and an office, so the room just sits there, unutilized. I'm not that worried about it, but my wife brings it up now and then. These mentions are just of the unused room itself, not, any, not anything concrete she actually wants to use it for. I made a new friend, These Ben. rich people problems right now. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> we have too many rooms. <laughs> I, I made a new friend, Ben, a 30-year-old male. About eight months ago, and it was very much one of those we connected from the first time we spoke to each other situations. I've actually never had that many close male friends, so this connection is especially important to me. The conversation flowed so easily. We had loads in common. I didn't think, mu I didn't think such a huge amount of genuine love and respect for a person could be developed in less than a year. But, Brokeback Mountain. but it's been very cool to experience that and get to know him. One of the things we bonded over was a similar love for art and music. Ben is way, way more talented than I am when it comes to painting but it's something we both enjoy. Uh, his birthday is coming up soon, and I thought on top of what else I was getting him, I could turn the spare room into something similar to an art studio for both of us to use. I already ordered a few things for it and was getting ready to jump into painting the walls when my wife came in and demanded to know what I was doing. I explained that I was finally fixing up the spare room. She said it was unacceptable I had done this without confirming with her that it was okay, mm -hmm. but I didn't think I would need to since it's been two years and the room has basically never been touched. Uh, initial thoughts, we're gonna keep going. There's an update, but uh, initial... Yeah, you should probably conversate with the person you're living with when yeah, you're living with the room that they the room. see every day too. Exactly. So he met, <laughs> uh, he met a friend, Ben, and within a year he's like, I'm gonna turn a, a room in my house into an art studio for this man. For Ben. That's so rich. That I, I wish so I had a friend like I know. that. It's pretty awesome. This is also giving uh, Amanda and I's uh, character couple, old couple, because yeah. it was all about turning the room into a dance studio because <laughs> my character was secretly gay. I'm like, I'm getting vibes from this that that is that. Uh, he's probably not gay though. He's probably just like obsessed he's with this obsessed. first male friendship. That's, mm -hmm. that's possible. He's desperate to keep it alive. Okay, first off, I'd like to thank everyone who was compassionate towards me in the comments. Ben and I sat down and talked on Tuesday night about everything. It was overwhelming to say the least. He was gentle and sweet as always, and I allowed me <laughs> and allowed me the time and space to say everything I needed to. That night was one of the most beautiful of my life. Acceptance, oh. Oh. love, and trust are truly so so powerful, life changing. Uh. Amy and, and he's I, married already. He's by married the way. to Amy. They've right. been married for Amy years. Amy is Michelle Williams. They live and he in a is house Jake together. Uh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Amy and I had a conversation about the spare room last night. I had been putting it off since my post a few days ago and was hoping to wait until the weekend to talk about it all, but she insisted. I did, as a lot of comments suggested, and used the renovation as a lead in to talk about other things going on. I told her that her reaction to it brought up a lot of confusing emotions for me that I've spent the last few days working through, and things continued from there. I had toyed with the idea of couples therapy and it was something she suggested, but I don't think it's a viable option. I love her, but I've come to realize that I was never in love with her like I once thought. Stop. And after getting to really and truly experience that, it wouldn't be fair to either of us if we tried to force something that I'm not capable of giving her. I'll be splitting my time, staying in one of our guest rooms slash with Ben in his apartment for the time being while we separate and work, work things out moving forward. Obviously that means the room renovations have been paused until further notice. I'm really, really excited for the future. <laughs> oh, he's so excited. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a comment here. Uh, it's great you have found someone you truly love, but really, dude, have some compassion for Amy. Do you realize you just threw her, threw her whole life upside down by telling her the person she is probably in love with never actually loved her and never could, and now you all, all also suddenly move in with the person you truly love into the home she probably envisioned as a place you two would raise a family. Michelle Williams. He responded, I would never say you should live a lie 
to make her family or any of that BS, but you seriously could just do this more tactfully. You know by not moving in, in so quickly. Hell, do you even know once the divorce process is done that either of you will even own this house anymore? The OP replied, sorry, I think my wording is coming off wrong in the post because another person thought the same thing. To clarify, I didn't move Ben into my home. I meant that I'm now sometimes staying in a guest room at my own home so Amy and I aren't sleeping in the same bed and sometimes staying at Ben's while we get through this transitional period. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um, someone else said, if only you had this conversation before emotionally cheating on her, but at least you took people's advice and not drag it any longer. Uh, someone commented, are you in love with Ben? He replied, I don't know if I'm fully prepared to confront this yet. <laughs> while I, while I, su while I subconsciously knew my feelings for Ben were a lot different and more intense than anything I had ever felt before, it was hard to even admit that to myself a little uh, while ago. Yeah. That's why all of the sexuality questions on the last post felt off to me. It was forcing me to be vulnerable. They also made me angry in a way, because literal strangers were pointing out things about me from a simple post, few comments that I struggled to see about myself. In an attempt oh, to answer your question, if this isn't what in love feels like, I'm scared to experience the real thing with how all-consuming this level of fulfillment already is. Next comment, is he in love with you? Uh, you would need to ask him that one. The level of care and overwhelming support I've received all throughout our friendship, but especially since we had our conversation, certainly makes me feel loved. I mean, I think this, this guy is fully in love. Two things are gonna happen. Yeah? Either Ben is gonna be like, hey, I'm also in love with you, and then it's gonna be this great little like, oh, we're gay in our 40s, or whatever. <laughs> like, that's gonna be cute. Or Ben's gonna be like, what? No, and then this guy is going to be like, it, devastated. Devastated lost. because like now it's lost, but like he, this needed to happen. Mm -hmm. He needs to start on this like journey because yeah. it's like Ben was just a way to like break free of Discovered something himself. that wasn't working. Uh, yeah, break his <laughs> egg open. Ah, uh, Oscar, Oscar, <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it feels pretty clear from the way this is all worded. He loves I think, Ben. I think, and I think Ben loves him. Like, I would be shocked if it, like, in reality, Ben's just kind of like, yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. Wow, you're <laughs> giving sick. me so much attention. Yeah, bro, I mean, I'm here for you whenever you need, man. Hey, yeah, you want a beer? Oh my gosh. You want a beer, dude? <laughs> he cares about me. <laughs> it's like he knows, like, alcohol. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what's happening, then Amy's like, you like all the time and it's just like oh I don't love this you can just tell by his lack of detail about Amy that he is just kind of like he's oh, out whatever. he's done with Amy uh, uh, Michelle Williams Michelle Williams oh see I was picturing Anne Hathaway but... how dare you okay. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, this is from R true off my chest I thought I was straight but I think I've this is a 17 year old but I think I have fallen in love with my best friend who's also 17 Oh. There's not much more to explain than the title says. Every night before I go to bed, he sends me a good night, I love you message. I've never had the chance to tell him how much it means to me uh, out of risk of sounding cringe or some shit. But every time he says it, it just makes me feel so genuinely loved and cared for. I feel queasy and fluttery when I'm around him. I feel such an attraction to him, but he's straight. Very much like I thought I was. I don't know what I am now. I've never had a successful, healthy relationship with women. I've never felt the same attraction to them as I do him. It kind of hurts me knowing I'll never get that chance with him. I can't control it though, and I know I'd get extremely bullied and called slurs for liking a man. I don't know what to do. Um, <clears throat> there's some comments here. I think you should take a little bit more time to examine your feelings thoroughly so that way you know for sure. Sexuality is, is a spectrum, and the only person who could figure out your feelings is you. With that being said, if you feel like you want him to know because your attraction and your feelings are true, then I say tell him. However, if you think it's too much of a gamble and are worried about how others will perceive you and your safety, obviously then I say put a pin in it. To see how your relationship continues to progress and then when you feel safe and ready, go for it. The OP said, definitely agree. My biggest fear at the moment is rushing things. Have you guys ever had feelings for a friend? I mean, especially like this is 17 year olds. I mean, at that age, you know, things are always, I feel like, complicated and confusing. Mm -hmm. Have you had a crush on a friend? <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> you threw it back at me. Um, no, actually, yeah. I, I don't know. How dare you? I know. Um, there are, it, it, it feels unrare, not rare, very common, for gay people in their younger years 
uh, to develop crushes on their straight friends. It just kind of like mm -hmm. happens, you know, you're, you're close with a, a guy your brain do is just like, you know, mm -hmm. chemicals and sure. sexuality. And you're just you trust like, that person. Right. And so, like, of course, you, you probably might start developing feelings. Uh, I've, I've, I didn't have that. I'm very happy because, I don't know, I, was, I think that had been a trope enough that I was like, don't fall in love with your straight friends. They're mm -hmm. your straight friends. Like, that, it, it gets messy. But, you know, if everyone's 17 in this story and every, you know, <laughs> if everyone's 17, <laughs> then it's like, I don't know, maybe the straight friend is not just straight. Uh, they just run the risk of like losing this friendship if they bring it up, but they mm -hmm. might need to do that because otherwise it might be torturous for them. Yeah, maybe your friends are gross. Maybe your friends are gross. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got yucky straight friends. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> They're all gross. <laughs> I've fallen in love with a straight once or twice in high school. With a straight. Once with a straight. <laughs> twice I in love high the straight. Yeah, with the straights. We love the straights. Me and my straights. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I've fallen in love with yeah a few of my straight friends in the past, and yeah, it gets pretty messy. It's like yeah. a, a unspoken. You attraction you have with someone that you know might not be attracted to you, and then suddenly mm -hmm. all the small things that they just do, like throw away or something, or say to you, you're like, oh, how would they say this to me? My, the love of my life, I'm right. heartbroken. Did you ever, did you ever say anything to these friends? Did you ever, or did you kind of just keep it all? Um, no, I like I a, a few little like hints here and there. Ask them yeah. a few things. You know, if they broke up with their girlfriend, like, oh, what happened? Mm -hmm. Why'd you break <laughs> up? But oh, you never straight up were like. I have a crush on you. No, what do you I think? never was. Because it was that fear, you know? That mm -hmm. fear of being like ridiculed sure. or that fear of like losing a friend, you know? Right. That sure. was. How did you come to terms with, or how did you get to the point of like, this isn't going to happen? So that's that. Did you, was there a. You it have to be straight up to your face. I, I was just telling myself, like, this is not happening. Get over it. You know, move on to someone that's actually interested in you, basically. Sure. You know, it, sh it shouldn't be this hard to get into a, a relationship with someone that's actually showing right. affection Action. towards you. Mm -hmm. well, let's see what happens here. <laughs> because there's an update. Uh, the majority of comments I was getting on the original post said to either wait or tell him how I feel, so I did. I told him. Ooh. Wow. This morning at 5.20 a.m., we went on an early morning walk. On that walk, I Ooh. asked him what he thinks about same-sex couples slash people who like the same sex. He said, is this your way of coming out to me? Which completely threw me off guard. We walked for a few more minutes in silence before he said, well, if it is, I accept your feelings. I've really liked you since year nine. Just thought you were straight. I find it humorous considering I was in the same predicament. Anyways, we're going on a date this Sunday. Uh, Ooh. So. <laughs> what can I say? I got some chills. <laughs> it's a sweet little story. <laughs> Update two. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Are they married? Those chills are going to get crazier. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. So this is two days later. Uh, it was amazing. 12-ish p.m., we went to this extremely nice cafe around the corner from our neighborhood, ate some lunch, and then headed to a local cinema. He held my f***ing hand. My hand. After the cinema, we headed back to his house to hang out for a little bit and just talk, random topics of conversation, etc., etc. When I was leaving, he kissed me on the cheek. One oh. final point, I truly appreciate all the support and encouragement from you guys. I would have been stuck in that same cycle of fear without the tips and encouragements. Thank you all so much. Another update, this is months later. It's been a bit of a ride. As of last week, I moved in with my boyfriend. I turned 18. I started working a well-paying job, work, and my school life has been incredible. An ally. <laughs> Any sort of like, <laughs> it's all gone, I lost it all. I appreciate all the support I got previously. I'll keep you all updated as time goes. That's so sweet. So, uh, wait, so nice. That's, that's the best they, possible. They got together? They got together? Yeah, they're and moving then they moved in, in together. together. They moved in together. They moved in together. At 18. Uh, wow. At 18, they're moving together. That 18. won't last. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's keep it precious. I will say, when you get older, these little like magic things are not as frequent. So this is very it's precious very and reminds Thank me of you. my younger days, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm old! Well, certainly, I mean, it's very sweet. Like, and it's, I'd say it's very lucky that this person, like yes. the first person that they fell in love with, it's like, you get the whole like, you know, free form channel, like, mm -hmm. love story here. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, I just feel like most of the time that does not happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, they'll be chasing this high for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like most people, <laughs> 
I would say most people, the first person you fall in love with absolutely does not know you exist. Or yep. like, it does not feel that same way. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's the most common. So this person hit the lottery. Um, so hey, wow, what a positive note to end on. Um, how are y'all feeling? Sweet and warm from the story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that for some reason. <laughs> Why not? I am so, I'm happy. I swear I'm happy. I'm feeling great. <laughs> Work. I don't, I don't know. These were these were all over the place. These all were over truly the map. All over the place. Would you say there were gay rights and gay wrongs? Yes. Yes. Both. <laughs> <laughs> who was uh, who was the wrongest in all of this? The wrongest. I somehow think the dad. <laughs> Even though he was fine, there's just, that was the most insane person out of all, there's worse people. The brother-in-law is probably the worst. There was a lot of like. Yeah, uh, the brother-in-law was the worst. The dad was too much. The dad was a lot, the, mm -hmm. the most extreme. It's like, what's worse, getting punched in the face or an actual tornado? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like. Because the tornado. It's like, it's like one, is, one is personal and you're like, ow, oh, you're homophobic. And the other one is like, no. You know, it's like. <laughs> Because you know you have to say a tornado is not homophobic. No. It's just a tornado. It's just a tornado. tornado. Yeah, it's just all over the place. <laughs> I agree. That's the his dad's dad worst. forever. Yeah, that's yeah. his dad for the rest that's of his life. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Uh, um, at least he's got an extended family of sex workers. I wonder if we can. F <laughs> f <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's a photo of, of of a gay rat wedding dress somewhere on the internet. You know that's prob there's probably something. She's probably not the only one to make that dress, too. I bet you other people. That's, yeah, that's the sad part. Yeah, she seems like someone who would be posting a lot about this dress. She's yes. really happy about it. Yeah. So, it's on a Pinterest somewhere. It's oh, on a Pinterest. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you both for joining me today. Uh, this has been a ride. Um, and uh, thank you all for watching. As always, uh, please send us Reddit stories that you find. So, uh, put them on the Smosh Reddit. Uh, send them to us on Twitter, anywhere, and we will read them here. Uh, and if there's updates on these stories, we will read those. But until next time, we'll see you later. Uh, goodbye. Say the thing. Work. Yeah. Oh, and also work. <laughs> Thank you.